Hi guys, Harden here, um, back with another Eve Echoes video. Um, this video has been inspired by uh, a video that uh, Sheev did on his channel uh, a few days ago, uh, which I thought was quite a fun little video and I thought I would do something similar here. Uh, I have just turned my settings up to ultra here, so you can see everything is quite laggy, I, but I thought as I'm not actually in space I'll, I'll do this. Um, so you can see my Raven Striker in all its glory. Um, so the video is going to be um, about my Raven Striker and uh, the kind of logic behind the setup for this and uh, my uh, the setup, the rigs, the implants uh, and everything else. Uh, I do want to say before I go into this that um, this ship and my other two Raven Strikers have been set up to kind of basically work with my play style. Um, as many of you who've been following my channel know, I only normally get about an hour to play maybe in the morning and maybe an hour to play in the evening. I don't, I can't dedicate too much time to this. I've got two, uh, two young children um, and I've got a full-time job. Um, so I can't spend hours and hours playing Eve and grinding and everything else. So what I want to do is just when I have got that little bit of time to play, I want to be able to, to earn some ISK uh, enough to kind of keep progressing in the game. So um, that was the kind of purpose that I created uh, this uh, Raven and my other three Ravens. Um, I have over time um, done very well with this. I have earned enough money that I could have progressed into capitals. Um, and the reason I haven't progressed into capitals so far is um, because, again, because of my limited playtime, um, a lot of the content for the capitals, like the capital anomalies and the special rallies and so on, they don't necessarily always, they're not necessarily always available when I log in. Um, so basically, uh, I decided I will eventually get there. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is try and make this uh, raven as effective uh, as possible so anyway i'm going to jump in now stop stop rambling uh, and jump in and kind of desc describe my current ratting fit but i will jump into some of the other fits and explain those as i go so um, the first thing i'll do let me just jump in here uh, this, as I said, is my current ratting fit, and I'll explain the logic uh, behind that. Uh, you can see it's got a very nice DPS, which is 2,803. Uh, the majority of that is coming from my missiles. Um, you can see here my missiles are large missiles. Um, so it's uh, I have got a few Pith B types on there, not not many, just I think it's about three of the A to Pith B types, which I've kind of been buying off the market uh, as and when I can. Um, I went through a period where I had some spare cash and basically I was just putting buy up borders up for 300 and occasionally those get fulfilled. Um, so that's how I've started collecting. But certainly um, the rest of the ship isn't B type yet. Uh, as I said, it's just those first, first three missile launchers. Um, the reason I'm using missiles, uh, they're not the most effective uh, for ratting, especially because currently I'm doing brawling ratting. Uh, I'm not ratting at range. Um, so theoretically, rapids actually apply a lot more damage, especially to the smaller rats, and torpedoes uh, apply a huge amount of damage to the battleships. So when you're doing a T-10 large, uh, the torpedo is actually very effective because you've got a lot of battleships to kill. Whereas if you're doing a small or a medium, the rapids work well. But the reason I like the missiles is more from the self-defense perspective in terms of the range that these give you. So if I, again, just hold on there for a second, um, you can see here that the range on this one is 136 kilometers. So um, basically, if someone comes in and tries to tackle uh, or whatever, I can still hit them at whatever range. Uh, I had, a, I think I did a video about it. I had an encounter a few weeks ago, uh, ago with uh, another multi-boxer uh, who was flying two Macarials, a Bellicose, and a couple of smaller tackle ships. And the first time I had a fight with him, he jumped in at zero. I was flying torpedoes and I downed one of his Macarials. The other Macarial warped out in structure. Um, but then I still lost a Raven because 
is uh, he was able to hold down one of my Ravens uh, from about 40 kilometers. Uh, my torpedoes couldn't touch him. Um, and gradually he just wore down one of the Ravens. And again, I was a bit stupid. I didn't ask for help in Alliance, or whatever. So it was my own fault, but it kind of made me aware that I need to be able to hit that tackle uh, a little bit further out than I could. So torpedoes were not the answer. I then adjusted my fit and I had actually one ship with torpedoes, one with missiles, uh, and uh, one with rapids, which actually worked quite well for rat for ratting because it was covering all the bases. Uh, but then I ran into this guy again, and in, the, in that particular instance, he actually came in. He came in with his two materials at range, um, so only my missile ship could hit him, um, and that was the one that actually was tackled by the NPCs. Um, so unfortunately my two other ships couldn't hit him uh, the ship that could hit him was actually getting shot by the I think it was the final wave of a Lord a large t10 uh, and he killed one of my uh, one of my Ravens again so at that point I kind of thought okay uh, I'm gonna go with missiles uh, across the board um, so if I get into a, a, a fight with him again I can apply that dim damage out to range um, and again that kind of goes with the uh, mid slots as well uh, again I'll explain the logic behind here uh, you can see I have one web and two target painters um, actually uh, webs are probably better for a missile ship in helping to apply damage especially to fast moving ships um, but at the same time webs only work up to 15 kilometers if you're using uh, a predator uh, web as I am here uh, so you can see the range on that is 14.8 kilometers whereas uh, when I'm ratting or if I, I do end up getting into some kind of PvP situation um, the, uh, the target painters uh, here have a optimal range of 34 kilometers and then an accuracy fall off of 82 so they're actually helpful at much greater dif distances um, and, and again especially with um, small sig radius targets not necessarily fast targets but small sig radius targets um, they are very they are very effective in helping boost missile damage so that's why i go with um, two target painters rather than and one web rather than two webs and one target painter but certainly target painters i found that particularly as i have skilled them up uh, they do work pretty well and even uh, i find even in the new dormants the target painters work pretty well uh, because the ships i find it's more because they've got a low sig radius than because they're going particularly fast and in the dormants if especially if i'm using uh, rapids they still they still hit very well and then the fourth low slot there is um, a heavy neutralizer uh, and again that is pretty useless for ratting doesn't do any doesn't give me any benefit whatsoever uh, in terms of ratting so it's kind of a wasted mod if I was wanting to optimize my ratting speed and everything else um, but it's very very useful in terms of dissuading uh, tackle the uh, lighter tackle again I've got the skills I haven't maximized the skill here um, but you can see it's got an optimal range of 23 kilometers and an accuracy fall off of 13 which brings it up to what's that 36 and I, it does actually reach out a bit further as well and I have uh, one of those on each of my ratting ravens so uh, if a small uh, inti or some other kind of ship comes in uh, there's a good chance that they're going to run out of cap pretty quickly uh, one other thing i would say about this setup and i will talk about my rigs in a minute is um, you see the capacitor there is showing five minutes and 57 seconds which doesn't seem to be that impressive but that's primarily because it's assuming that all of these modules are running at the same time um, and particularly that the neutralizer is on so if i just take the neutralizer off for a second um, and again you wouldn't be running the neutralizer constantly the chances of actually using it that often are very rare uh, but if i take the neutralizer off you see my capacitor there has gone up to uh, nine minutes and again that's assuming that i'm running all, all those other mods especially the two shield boosters constantly um, so if i drop i'll just drop that back on again there you go uh, then in terms of the mid slots um, the next thing to talk about here is uh, my drones um, 
I could be applying more DPS um, I, by using large drones, but basically I have been scaling from the start into medium drones uh, because they give good flexibility. Um, they will hit, uh, they will apply decent damage to larger targets, um, and they will still hit those smaller targets. So if you're using uh, a system like missiles, which is not so good against the smaller ships, the Valkyries in particular offer a, a lot of capability in terms of hitting the smaller targets. And um, if you can see here, uh, the optimal range is 5.25 on there. There's an accuracy of 4.5. Uh, but the nice thing is, once you've trained up the drone skill, I believe it is, to level 5, you've got an extremely good flight velocity of 4,500, which uh, actually keeps up with uh, a lot of the inties. And then again, with the extended range from the higher drone skills, uh, it means that Valkyries, especially if you've got two on each ship, uh, will work very effectively in combination with the neutralizer in scaring in scaring kind of tackle uh, tackle off so that's why i've uh, that's why i've opted for valkyries and that's why i've put all my training on those into into medium drones um, so again that's the logic um, I don't necessarily, you can see the DPS on the ship is already high enough. I don't necessarily need more DPS through large drones. I just need that extra security in terms of uh, when I'm ratting if in case any kind of PVP actually happens. So again, it's not 100% optimized for getting the best ticks, uh, but it is optimized in terms of giving me some safety. And I very rarely lose some ships uh, when I'm ratting in climb. In fact, the examples I gave earlier were the first time that I've actually lost ships while ratting down in 0, 0.0 um, in terms of the uh, low slots um, you can see here i've got double uh, shield booster um, primarily i only need to run one of those i can run one of those 100 percent constantly uh, and i will never run out of cap so i can run one shield booster uh, and i only need to turn the second shield booster on uh, occasionally if for example the last wave of uh, a large t10 if all the ships are concentrating on me then sometimes I might turn the second shield booster on for a few cycles, which is normally enough to catch up and uh, maintain my shield. Um, again, just two, um, two uh, shield hardeners there. Uh, again, these are all just kind of C types. And again, two damage mods uh, because I have actually maximized the, my skills, um, my missile skills, which means that I actually get the maximum activation time bonus on these. So I actually get 44 seconds activation time. So it, to me, it kind of feels like a bit of a waste not to take advantage of that. Um, and again, they, they help with uh, that in contributing to that large uh, DPS there. Um, in terms of the rigs, uh, I did uh, last week, actually, uh, prior to the uh, big anniversary patch, I did actually finally invest in some integrated rigs. Um, I have actually made a mistake on this account, which I have uh, corrected on my second account, uh, but I haven't corrected here yet. And what I did was I invested in 2P rigs, uh, basically, which are bay loading accelerators and warhead calefaction catalyst. Um, this had the integration efficiency of 80%. Um, to put this together, you needed six bay loading accelerator threes and six warhead calefaction catalysts for each of these three um, integrated 2P combat uh, modules. Um, and they significantly boosted my DPS. Um, well, actually, when I say significantly, not that significantly. It's probably about, in total, about an extra 200 DPS from this. Uh, but what I realized afterwards, afterwards is actually on the third one, because of stacking penalties, the actual increase in DPS from doing the third one is actually relatively minimal. It's only like an extra 50 or so DPS. The first two work very well, um, but the third one is not like a huge, there's not a huge boost. And what I have done on my second account was I actually changed the integration on the third uh, um, integrated module and I actually included increased the shield boost amount and also reduced shield boost capacitor and that has made that Raven much more tanky with only a minimal decrease 
in the uh, DPS. Um, so I will at some point when uh, rig prices are slightly less crazy, I will actually change that on this one and uh, go for a slightly more tanky. It will reduce the DPS slightly, maybe by about 150 to 100 DPS, um, but it really does increase the uh, really does increase the tank. Um, and in fact, let me just go back. I'll just uh, explain here. Uh, give you an idea of how much the tank is increased. If I click on that large shield boost, you can see the shield boost amount is 914, which is pretty decent because I've got very good large shield booster skills. But if I'm using the, uh, if I use the um, shield boost amount in combination with the uh, cap reduction, the actual shield boost amount is something like an extra 200 or so um so it comes to like 1100 and something which is quite significant especially as they're kind of cycling very quickly and especially if you're using two of them it really kind of adds a lot of defense uh to the shield in terms of the other rigs uh basically this one i have stacked uh i have stacked um semiconductor memory cells and capacitor control circuits uh, in all three it's all the same uh, i am very happy that I actually did this last week before the patch and it wasn't because of some genius on my part that I kind of thought this is the right time to do this it simply was because I finally had the money to do this the ISK to do this and I thought I'm going to go ahead and do that now uh, which as I said I'm very happy about because the price of the uh, capacitor control circuits in particular went from about 60 million when I did this up to about 130 million per rig um this week after the after the patch um so like more than more than double and again if you're buying six capacitor control circuits for each of these integrated modules you're buying 18 and if you're spending a hundred and something million you're spending billions just on the rig so i'm quite happy that i actually did that at that time um, but again that really does boost the uh the shield uh sorry the capacitor on this ship um again it doesn't doesn't you don't really see it here so much but you can see the capacitor uh, capacitor capacity is up to twenty four thousand, and it's actually a very nice recharge uh, rate as well as i said the only reason it looks doesn't look so good on here is because of the uh, neutralizer and it, the double shield boosting but in reality it, it actually does tank for uh, a lot longer um, uh, and then i will just jump into the rig which is the thermodynamic which i got when it first came out the on the concord pass uh, and i have just slowly been kind of building up and uh, investing in this rig so you can see here um uh, sorry nano core not rig um, you can see here that obviously it has the 18 percent missile damage uh, and then i've added on another 8.6 there the second one the capacitor now i have got up to 10.64 uh, the missile torpedo damage I have got up to 10.64 and then finally there's the last two is the shield 9.53 and the missile torpedo kinetic damage is uh, another missile torpedo kinetic damage is 9.53 um, the shield I I think you can get up to about 11% I have plowed a lot of those blue things uh, into that and I keep having just gigantically bad luck on that um, I have spent literally I have not bought any nano cores i have not bought any nano cores in any concord pass since i got this thermomagnetic i have basically just been using the points to get those blue things that allow you to kind of re-spin on these things and as you can see i still haven't kind of maximized this out and it's it's been taking a long time and a huge investment um and also kind of like a complete focus uh, because it means that I haven't been able to kind of develop nanocores for other ships. So again, this is just my play style. It's just that I wanted to kind of focus on these Ravens. Uh, obviously, uh, you might consider that kind of stupid. <laughs> you might prefer to be flying lots of ships, but I kind of just want to make sure that this ship that I'm flying most of the time is as good as I can make it. So I probably do want to kind of re-roll the shield a little bit, see if I can get squeeze a bit more out of that. And also this missile torpedo kinetic damage here. Um, in terms of the final slot here, um, I haven't started training that, but you can see the cost for doing that is gigantic. It's 90 of these, 900 of the, sorry, 90 of the, I 
the General Computing Chips Combat Data Stream. Uh, it is 900 of these data cores, data banks, uh, and it's also a lot of these uh, general nano source and triangular structures. Um, and the chances of the fail chances, okay, you get 100% on the first one, but by the time you get around even to half, you're failing huge amounts, and uh, it's just not it's just not worth it. Uh, again, I'd probably be having to play for another 10 years before I, it would become so <laughs> relevant. So I'm not uh, I'm not bothering to um, to improve that one any any further. Uh, but as I said, the the stats here are pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that as it stands. Uh, I think it's just I would like to squeeze a little bit more shield out of it, and I'd like to squeeze a little bit more missile torpedo kinetic damage. But as I said, I've been getting some very bad luck on those blue uh, the things that let you re-roll um, but hopefully that luck will change at some point so anyway that is my uh, fit on this ship uh, for running uh, PVE for just null sec ratting currently and it's pretty much the same on all three of my on, on my other two ravens with the exception of the raven with the nicer tank now i'm only using one shield booster but i'm i've added in an afterburner uh primarily so that i can collect the loot um uh, again that works the the one the single shield booster on there because of the extra boost amounts and because of the reduction in cap uh, basically works extremely well so um basically for that one uh, it's slightly different but my my third ship is pretty much identical to this with the exception of the fact that that one is the DPS is only I think it's only around 2400 or so because I haven't completely finished all the skills um, and because um, I haven't done the combat integrated rigs yet I've only done the uh, the, the engineering the uh, capacitor ones um, I'll jump in quickly just to give you an idea on the skills of what I've invested in this. And again, I've invested a huge amount of time in the skills. I haven't bothered starting the capital skills yet. Um, I'll just jump in here. You can see I'm very space poor right now. I've only got like 150 million in my wallet. That's primarily because of this event. I spent, well, apart from the fact that I did all my integrations in the last week, the integrated rigs, um, I also dumped a lot of points into buying Omega uh, with Plex uh, because I wanted to get all those bonuses and extra skill points uh, from the uh, Omega giveaway that they're doing currently. Um, so I don't really have that much money. But in terms of the actual skills for the battleship, uh, again, I have got some basic skills for some of the other ships, like the frigate, as you can see here, because generally I do use that for just moving stuff around. Uh, cruise I had trained up early on, but you can see I've taken the skills out of that. Um, battle cruiser I have maintained uh, because uh, I do have a couple in the station here, which are good when you get some enemy inties roaming around. So I did keep my battle cruiser skills, uh, and then you can see my battleship command uh, is up to five five four. Um, again, level five here will just give me a little bit of extra speed. Um, so it's not really in a little bit of extra inertia, so it's not exactly the most critical skill. So that's the one I'm kind of leaving till last on that on that one there. Um, and again, sorry, it's a bit laggy. I should really turn down the settings. In terms of navigation, uh, you can see my afterburner skill there is 554. Uh, my micro warp drive skill is 554. Again, I don't really use micro warp drives because I, I find I, I don't like the fact that they kind of um, uh, reduce your shield, reduce your cap. Um, and then uh, engine operation, which is just kind of a pointless skill. Uh, jump drive operation, I have bought the skills, but again, I haven't put any time into, into developing those. Um, so that's the on the kind of cruising technology. In terms of maintenance technology, um, you can see here uh, shield operation. I have actually achieved shield operation 555. Uh, again, the benefit of doing the final level five is not that huge. I think it's an extra uh, one percent, sorry, a reduction in one percent of the activation time. It's a slightly reduced capacitor need, um, so it's not a huge benefit. Um, it also reduces power grid, which means that 
Uh, it helps me with kind of adding additional shields if I want to to this ship. Uh, I might at some point try a three shield booster variant, but uh, currently I'm just going with the two um, and that just kind of adds a fractional benefit to the capability of my shield booster. And likewise, I have shield hardening, but that one is only 554 five, because again, the level five here, uh, the actual benefit from that is quite small. So again, let me see, jump in here. You can see uh, I'm currently on four. So the reactive shield hardener, the activation time is 4%, uh, and this would just push it up by an additional uh, 1%. So maybe at some point I will go for that, but uh, there are other things which are kind of more important right now. Um, armor operation you can see I've put absolutely nothing into that I've got some of the basic skills uh, defense upgrade uh, again I, I have just because of the frigate um, I have got some again in battle cruiser 554 but in battleship I have actually boosted that the whole way um, up to 555 uh, because again that really does help to with the uh, the kind of um, survivability so you can see here it only increased the shield by an extra two and a half percent but when you've actually got such a large shield as you have on the raven striker that extra two and a half percent is very nice because it all it all adds up it also boosted the battleship armor by five percent which again is not huge and especially as i'm not tanking armor but again it just it means that anyone who's trying to kill me has to chew through that little bit extra and again it does add a, a very nice boost to battleship structure which again isn't tanked um, but again just means that there's some extra hit points on there to to chew through um, so that's in terms of the about the defense upgrade skills i don't think there's anything else down here no uh, okay so then uh, i will jump into electronics here and again you can see that i have my frigate skills i do have some destroy engineering which i don't know why i've got that one um, again i might just take the skill points out of that just to speed something else up uh, battle cruiser is 554 and then battle, uh, battleship engineering is 554 currently but is going to be uh, five shortly um, and again it, the benefit for this one is quite marginal of pushing it up to five uh, but uh, you can see here what it do will do is it will give me an extra an extra two percent capacitor which again doesn't sound like much but again it really does kind of add up with all the other kind of benefits and uh, again with the implants coming in that might might assist with other things as well also again increases the power grid so it gives me more flexibility in uh, in setting things up uh, the other kind of elements here in terms of the power grid uh, in terms of the battleship walk past uh, doesn't really make that much difference but again it's all about the kind of marginal benefits and again as I'm focused on battleships as that my primary ship as I'm not moving into capitals anytime soon uh, I kind of think it's kind of worthwhile doing that but of course everyone has different opinions everyone's got different play styles some people prefer flying lots of different ships and in, in which case i completely understand that and that's the way you should you should go um, and then in terms of electronic warfare uh, again it's 554 um, and um, this is kind of helps with the neutralizer range uh, again at some point it's not a huge to change change that up to level five is not huge it's only 29 days um, have I just added that to the queue? Don't want to do that. Uh, let's just take that off a second. Let's take that off. Didn't want to do it right now. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing expert battleships on another something like 29 days. Uh, let's jump back in here. Where were we? Yeah, okay, so expert electronic warfare. Uh, if I scroll down again, it's just a bit laggy. Um, this helps with it also helps with the webs I believe let me just check so yeah so it helps with the neutralizer range I see on the thing it shows webs I don't know why why it shows webs on that on here apply to webs I'm not quite sure how it applies to webs but maybe there's something I'm missing there but anyway uh, I possibly will train that one up to 555 at some point um, and then um, signal disruption is another skill which again I as you can see I use two target painters on here this helps with the uh, 
the kind of accuracy, the range, um, and kind of increasing the kind of effectiveness of that. It's at 554 currently. And uh, again, it's another skill where, because I use target painters a lot, because I'm using missiles and focused on missiles, that is something which uh, I probably will boost up. You can see that it's an extra 5% on fall off, uh, an extra, um, well, that's on, that's target painter accuracy. Uh, so yeah, I might do that at some point. An extra 5% will will just increase the range that little bit further. Um, so that's something I probably will do. Um, and then um, targeting is another one where I have 554. And again, just being able to lock things a little bit quicker, have an extra target on the top list is something that would be nice. So again, that's probably on my list of uh, skills, which I will kind of boost up to 555 at some point uh, when I've worked through everything else. And then you can see on weapon technology, uh, you can see there's nothing in ray, ray lasers, nothing in rail guns, nothing in cannon, and then quite comprehensive on missiles. Um, I have trained all the missiles, the small missiles, the medium missiles, the uh, advanced missile, sorry, the advanced missiles, the large ones, everything has gone up to level five uh, because uh, when you do level five, you do get that little bit of extra uh, activation time on the ballistic controls, which is why my ballistic controls, when I activate them now, give me 44 seconds. So with two ballistic controls, you can't, uh, especially since they were nerfed and you have that longer cooldown period, you can't run them constantly. But with two, two, you can still kind of have them up for quite a significant amount of time uh, in a fight. And um, I don't didn't actually show you here, but basically when I am when I have them activated, my DPS is over three thousand, around three thousand two hundred. So boost the DPS by about four hundred. And with two of those, um, you can run them consecutively, and so you can have an extra four hundred DPS for nearly a minute and a half, uh, which in a PvP fight is quite a substantial amount of time and if the fight goes on then um, you can recycle them again uh, and uh, weapon technology the only other one there is drones uh, which as you can see I've got some of the small drone skills but I've never actually trained them uh, but you can see medium drone there I have at 555 up to expert drone operation and then the medium drone upgrade I've also done 555 again the benefits of the last level on that were are fairly minimal but again as it's kind of my primary one of my primary weapon systems I thought I might as well push it to the limit uh, again helps with any tackle that's on me and then drone advanced drone expert drone expert drone is one I definitely recommend uh, for anyone flying drones at level five because it does quite a, it does add quite a nice bit of velocity onto onto the drone which uh, does help in catching fast inties and so on so you can see here um, you get drone flight velocity an extra well it jumps up from 32 percent to 50 percent which um, brings the valkyries up from about 4,000 meters a second to 4,500 which again helps it catch a lot helps them catch a lot of the the smaller ships so that one is definitely a skill i would recommend to push to five um, and then uh, finally um, you can see industrial technology science uh, those mining resource production I have literally nothing in those um, I've never been interested in in the industrial side of Eve uh, which is kind of ironic as I'm in one of Eve's well one of Eve Echo's leading industrial corps which is Xanadu which is the one of the main uh, industrial corps for the SHH Alliance or one of the leading corps in the game for industry but it's just not my thing <laughs> so uh, that's why there's no investment in that uh, and then finally before we end this video I know it's going on a quite long actually I didn't realize it was it was as long as it was but um, I will just quickly show you a couple of my other setups uh, particularly relating to some of the stuff the new stuff that has been put into the game so as I said this is my general uh, actually before I do that what I do is I need to check, go into my items because sometimes when I do uh, uh, the fittings, unless I've opened my items hanger, um, it doesn't load up properly when I try and set my fittings. So I just quickly load that up and then, okay, there we go. Uh, so, oh, the only other thing I didn't mention is implants uh, in terms of my setup. Now, um, I haven't really done, I did, I think I did the tidal and the abyss to level five 
uh, so I got everything in the first week um, but I haven't really spent a huge amount of time that I haven't really pushed that any further because as you can see I'm completely out of ISK so I've just been doing general ratting um, and I have kind of upgraded this one to level 7 which gives me a 0.2.8% and 0.2.8 increase in um, I think shield I'm not sure exactly what it is uh, does it show here um, it's hard to see on this one I'm not sure uh, but it basically increases increases shield and I think armor slightly uh, which again is a like a nice passive benefit um, I have used I have tried the the standard mode here um, which for this one is the warhead charge which you can choose between the range extending or the precision I did try the precision uh, while doing some of the kind of smaller anomalies where there's more kind of frigates uh, and destroyers and I honestly didn't really notice any difference so again you can see I haven't really trained that up very much um, uh, I will gradually do that over time and try and get some of these other nice uh, kind of bonuses that come with the implants but as you can see so far haven't really done very much with that uh, and then finally as I said I'm just going to show you a couple of my other fittings uh, here for those of you that are interested uh, I'll jump in here fitting management okay so um, here we've got uh, actually let me just delete this dormant one here I thought I'd done that already uh, because I had a, do a general dormant fitting but basically I discovered that you really need a different fitting for the two that they've released so far the tidal uh, tidal lock and the abyss beyond the abyss or whatever it is uh, I'm just going to delete that one because that's an old one I don't want that on there um, okay so I go back to my fittings so um, here you can see I have got a uh, that's the PVE PVP setup which I was just kind of showing you um, here is my abyss setup um, which uh, let me just apply that and then we can so show you on the ship Confirm and close this, close this. Uh, it's just setting itself up now. Okay, I really should turn the settings down. My tablet really struggles at this one. So you can see the abyss is the one where you have to kill the towers um, and again I've used this a few times with people with nightmares so I have my three ravens set up with missiles uh, that basically can hit out to 136 kilometers uh, and they do a pretty good job on the towers. Um, the strategy now the one that seems to work best is to uh, reduce all the towers down to structure you have to be careful not to kill any. Uh, but reduce them down to structure uh, and when you have all six near near in structure that's when you concentrate on them and then you have to rely on the nightmare to be able to tank all the waves that spawn as and when each tower is destroyed um, you can see here the dps on this one is 2697 which is very respectable um, it has uh, again the two large shield boosters two shield hardeners uh, and a damage control uh, I don't know why it's popped up there uh, a damage control and one ballistic control uh, and the mid slots on here are two target painters uh, and two webs um, but again if you're just hitting the towers you don't really need the webs so it's possible I might actually just drop one of those webs and go with uh, uh, a group uh, a group shield booster on that and my other three um, but again I haven't really done the abyss that much so I can I can play around with that but again this one works in the same way as the pretty much as the apoc strikers do uh, basically you have the nightmare uh, it shield it kind of protects you while you kind of do all your work on the towers and then you kind of black the towers at once you do get a big spawn but if you kill the towers quickly um, then you kind of complete the abyss um, so again that's my setup on that one and then on uh, if I go my fitting management uh, and jump into the title here again this one's a bit different 
uh, the tidal, uh, you don't have to shoot the towers. Uh, the primary th uh, thing with the tidal is basically just killing the spawns at the towers. They're all pretty much short range. So in this case, what I do is I go with rapids. Uh, again, the DPS is lower, but the application is pretty decent. Um, so obviously with missiles, you never miss. Um, so you can see the DPS there is 2,500. With the missiles, you never miss, and rapids apply very, very nicely, especially combined with uh, webs and uh, with painters. In this case, I might actually tweak this and actually go with an additional web uh, and drop one of the uh, drop one of the painters here, uh, because in this case, a lot of the NPCs are within range. They have to be within 10 kilometers of the tower to stop the progress in terms of you capturing the tower. Um, so I think I might actually swap out one of the painters for another web on this one. But again, maybe even the group shield. Um, again, I've done this one up to level six, just with uh, without any logi, with just other, with my three raven, my two ravens, and uh, my two other ravens, and another uh, court mate in uh, a tanky battleship, and that's worked quite well. Uh, I find the title is much easier, and again, the tank here is similar. It's just two shield. Um, two large shield boosters, two hardeners, um, the damage control. Damage control, I could go with another shield hardener, um, but I kind of find, I like to, I don't want to kind of get stacking penalties. Um, you do get some nice passive bonuses with the damage control and it is very useful in emergencies. I mean, I know there's a long cooldown on it, um, but again, um, at the start, if you hit, if you're the ship that gets targeted at the start of the wave, and you can immediately activate the uh, the uh, damage control at the start, you take away a lot of damage for about 20, 30 seconds, uh, which gives you plenty of time for your tank to start keeping up, and you can start blapping uh, blapping the NPC. So you reduce the DPS quite quickly. So again, that's my kind of logic behind that one. And then the final one before I end this video, which has gone on way too long, is uh, my uh, fitting for the DIR, DIR uh, Reflections uh, Combat Arena. Uh, now this was quite a few months ago, so um, this is something where, um, ba well, basically, I'm not sure they're, they're meant to be bringing back in a new arena shortly. Um, and uh, I'm not sure what kind of the format is, whether it's going to be battleships or not. But this is the one that I was using for DIR Arena, and this worked very well. Um, I know that uh, that um, Apoch Strikers were the meta. Everyone was kind of raving about Apoch Strikers, but actually this team, my three Ravens, were actually up to third place at one point. The only reason uh, they actually dropped back off the off the leaderboard was when the nightmares were allowed or when the nightmares could start using their bubbles and basically everything all the top teams were basically nightmares with kind of faction battleships but until that point um, basically my raven strikers were killing all the apoc teams they were killing all the faction battleship teams were doing extremely well um, but then once the nightmares came in and the logi came in uh, that's when my team started failing but uh, again I'll just quickly show you my setup on this one uh, okay this hasn't worked because I haven't got all the items in my hangar I don't know why I don't have all the items in my hangar but um, okay that's very strange I'm gonna have to check why uh, but basically it was again large missiles because I would kind of try and stay out of range uh, for as long as possible uh, and do as much damage from range as I could um, it was pretty tanky in fact let me just go here maybe I can show you without actually fitting management yeah I need to check what's in my um, if I go into DIR here you can see so yeah it was the missile launchers it was one shield booster, two um, adaptive invulnerabilities, one um, reactive shield hardener, because again, um, often the damage type was kind of similar, especially with the three ravers, I would kill off one or two of the enemy ships, which then meant the damage type was normally one type of damage, which meant the reactive um, hardener worked very well. Um, and then it was two ballistic control systems. I kind of think now if they, if they do bring in something similar, uh, I might actually go with a double large shield booster and drop one of the ballistics because again, they did get nerfed. They're not as good as they were. Um, but again, I'll have to think about that when they when the, when that happens. And then in my mid slots, uh, again a predator, two 
target paint, fleet target painters. Again, that was mainly because I was staying at range, so I didn't really need um, the web. Um, if I was going in close constantly, then I would probably go for a web and drop one of the target painters. But um, as I was staying at range for a lot of the fight, the target painter is more useful. Uh, and then um, large group shield booster and uh, the combat rigs, that was my old setup. Um, so um, actually I need to check that that didn't <laughs> didn't remove the rigs from when I when I tried to set that up didn't remove the rigs let me just make sure because that's the first time I've done that let's make sure it keeps the integrated rigs yeah it does um, so um, that was my setup for that uh, thing um, and I think actually it will be um, the, the new the new setup with the integrated rigs will will make this kind of a, again a tough team to beat I'm expecting this new kind of uh, PvP arena mode to come in soon you can see in the uh, in the uh the event that's going on currently um that there are some rewards for a kind of an arena and there's going to be a challenge mode the way out of sleep um so there will be something coming in soon uh, i'm not sure where that is let's have a look is it one of this one well that was 21 missions i haven't done any of those yet um was it here uh that's the event encounters which again i'm not i haven't been doing um but, 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 but let's have a look let's scroll along here along here at some point here okay maybe it's this one here so yeah win one time in faction war games ultimate showdown um so there are some rewards here in this way out of sleep for some kind of faction war games mode which we haven't seen yet and you see initiate a challenge and win two times um so uh, i'm kind of looking forward i hope there is a kind of it is kind of uh, an option for bringing battleships in there um, because again um, I find it quite fun that with the DIR reflections where uh, no one had any expectations and you'd go in against a team with like two Vindicators and a Carrier or two Rattlesnakes and uh, a Vindicator and uh, beat them with three Ravens it was quite <laughs> <laughs> quite amusing um, because the kind of faction battleship pilots didn't really expect uh, a fleet of ravens to, to take them down uh, as as quickly as they did uh, anyway that is in summary or that's a summary of my ship my raven striker and the kind of logic behind it and how it works again this is just my personal uh, personal way of doing things which just fits in with my play style fits in with the amount of time i can play um, it's definitely not for everybody and it requires a huge amount of time investment in terms of the the skill points that i have put into just focused on on battleships and the battleship weapons um, and uh, and also in terms of the isk that i've spent in terms of for example the integrated rigs and the nano cores so it's very very specialized it ties in with the way i like to play the game and how i like to play the game uh, and it's definitely not for everybody uh, but certainly it works for me and i hope you found it interesting to uh, to learn all about it anyway that's the end uh, if you did like this video did find it informative please do uh, like and surprise uh, uh, subscribe and thank you to she for giving me the inspiration i'm sorry that this one has gone on a lot longer than his i'm obviously a lot more verbose <laughs> so anyway thank you night guys uh, good night fly safe bye